Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the Romberg Hammerstein operetta, East Wind, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, charming Mimi Benzel. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another distinguished musical play is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Our story tonight takes half the world for its stage. Lovely Mimi Benzel is Claudette, and I am Paul. In a musical adventure born on... The East Wind. Granier. Only the leaves singing in the poplar trees. It's the east wind, Papa Granier. And I thought I heard a man's voice singing to me. He's calling you away from us, Claudette. Will you write a letter now and then to your old schoolmaster from Saigon from the Far East? Of course, Papa Granier. It will be a great change for you, Claudette. Here in France, your life has been so sheltered. My father will look after me. It would break my heart if any ugliness should touch our little Claudette. <laughs> Why, Papa Granier, have you forgotten all the things you teach us in the schoolroom? That life is good, the sun smiles on us, and the world's the most wonderful place in the world. Have you ever heard a call bell ringing? Have you heard it? Yes, we have. Your purse. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited. I, I just don't know what I'm doing. 
You're going all the way to uh, Saigon? Yes. I hope it'll be a delightful voyage for both of us. Yes, you stay right there with the luggage, Claudette. I'll go find us a carrot. Thank you, Renee. Have you, Mamselle? Where? In France, just before I sailed to Saigon. Then you must have remarkable hearing. I've been stationed here with the army for three years. Oh, well, I must have dreamed. Is this your first visit to Saigon? Yes. Well, then let me tell you something about life in the Far East. If you want good luck, you must gamble. You must gamble for your good luck. And if you'd love life, you must seek it. You must seek life if you'd love it. Out in the east, here, nearer the sunrise, fortune may change it. May my faith ride with the east wind, with the east wind. May my faith ride out in the tropics under. Beggar or king, 
May I introduce myself? I am Captain Paul Gervais. Gervais? I am Claudette Fortier. Mademoiselle Fortier. You must allow me to show you the sights of Saigon. Oh, I should be most grateful to you, Captain. There is so much I want to see A con guy fill a banyan tree I will do my best to show you round You won't miss anything with me Just the word describing what I'm finding in you. I saw your eyes and I liked your eyes. Their look was tender and kind. That we would be the best of friends. I soon made up. brother of yours. Rene, it's good to see you again. How are you, Paul? You look great. Well, the army agrees with me. Do you know Miss Forche? Do I know her? <laughs> I'm engaged to her. Engaged? Yes. You, you're engaged to my brother? We, uh, we met on the boat. It was quite a long voyage. And uh, quite an interesting one. Yes. Yes, I imagine it was. My brother has something of a reputation as a ladies' man, Claudette. As a matter of fact... Just a minute, Paul. Excuse, my dear. Are you trying to spoil this for me? She's a sweet girl, Renee. And I'm going to marry her. Well, congratulations. Frankly, she's too good for you. What do you mean by that? You know what I mean. You settle down, give her a good home, fine. But if you hurt her, did I ask for any brotherly advice? Oh, there's no charge. Unless you don't take it. Paul! What's wrong, Claudette? Rene is in trouble. He won't tell me what it is, but we have to leave Saigon. But when? Now, tonight. Oh, Paul. I never should have married him. Why didn't you stop me? Why, I thought you were in love. We were. But he doesn't need a wife. A wife is just a burden to him. Oh, Claudette, don't you know that I'm in love with you? Oh, Paul. Are you love? Are you the dream I've waited for? Are you my brave and shining knight with the bright to take Are you my... my brother, Claudette. You belong with him. It's too late for us, Paul. Claudette, hurry. We've 
got to leave. I'm coming. Goodbye, Paul. Goodbye. Gordon, are you coming? Yes, Renee, yes. Goodbye, Paul. Goodbye. second act of East Wind in just a moment. Report card time is mighty important in most of our homes as we follow our children's progress through school or college. And there's another kind of report that is important to each one of us, too. The reports on the progress made and the work performed by the railroads in bringing you most of the things you eat, wear, and use in your daily life. These reports show that in 1951, the railroads turned out the second largest job of hauling ever recorded in time of peace. In 1951, the average freight train moved more tons of freight and moved them faster than ever before. The transportation service performed in an average hour's operation, measured by the tons of freight moved one mile, was nearly 50% more than 10 years ago, double that of 20 years ago, and almost three times what it was 30 years ago. And that is only one measure of railroad progress. This great increase in efficiency is due in large part to a program of investment in improved plant and facilities, a program which has been carried forward more intensively than ever in the years since the end of World War II. Just last year, for example, the railroads put into service almost 85,000 new and larger freight cars and 2,500 new locomotives, and they would have installed even more if materials had been available. But while railroad reports for 1951 show near record volumes of traffic handled with record efficiency, they also show that the rise in wages, prices, taxes, and other expenses has been so much greater than the increase in freight rates which railroads can charge that in 1951 earnings were actually smaller than in other years when traffic was less and efficiency was lower. And it is upon these earnings that railroads must depend to carry forward their improvement program, a program which means more efficient, more dependable, more economical transportation for the commerce and the defense of the nation. Now here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of East Wind, starring Gordon McRae as Paul and Mimi Benzel as Claudette. Monsieur Grenier, this is my last day in Paris. Yes, Captain. My leave ends tonight, and I must go back to Saigon. But I was told that you might help me locate a young woman. One of my students went to Saigon. Claudette? Yes, I was afraid it would lead to unhappiness. She married my brother. A despicable young man. Oh, Monsieur Grenier, where has he taken her? Do you have any idea where Claudette is now? I know exactly where she is. Oh, please, Monsieur, take me to her. What is Claudette doing in this cabaret? Singing for her supper, since her husband does not choose to feed her. Shh, I believe this is her number. Madame et Monsieur, the Club Continental presents the incomparable Claudette. Hang your hopes on the highest 
Paris for you. Why did you try to find me, Paul? Where is Rene? Oh, he turns up from time to time when he needs money. Claudette, I can't bear to see you singing in a place like this. I... Take this. I can't. Please, I, I'm leaving for Saigon at midnight. Tonight? Claudette, come with me back to the east and the east wind. She will not go with you. Rene. Because she's married to me. If you would treat her with decency... Listen to the preacher. Tell me what's right and wrong, and meanwhile you'll run off with your brother's wife. That the idea? He's right, Claudette. I never should have asked you to leave him. I'm going now. Oh. I doubt very much if we will ever see each other again. No. God be with you. Paul! Papa Granier, how long has it been since I sat in your classroom conjugating Latin verbs? Amo, amas, amat. Only three years. Three centuries. Surely you do not mourn for Rene. Mourn for him? He died as he lived, by violence. Now that you're free from him, Claudette, surely there is someone else. Paul? He's half a world away. The east wind will never bring him back to me. Back to Paris. But you love him. Oh, Papa Granier. I'd be a fool to fall. Not quite empty, my child. 
You're my best audience, Papa Granier. Didn't you notice a certain army officer hiding in the shadows? Where? Paul! Granier, you, you promised. What's happened to you, Paul? What's wrong? Well, a, a soldier's life isn't exactly a safe one, Claudette. You're wounded. It's not too serious. He'll be much better soon. But what I am, Claudette, perhaps we can see each other again. Now is the time you need me. Oh, no, no. I'd be a burden to you. I... Paul. Don't you want me? Oh, Claudette, what kind of talk is this? Pride, self-pity. Well, will you let that ruin your life together? So everything's not perfect. What difference does it make? You're in love, aren't you? Of course, Papa Granier. Oh, you know we are. Then I give you good odds the sun will rise on time tomorrow. And the world is a wonderful place. If you want it to be. Oh, yes. If you want it to be. Mimi Benzel will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, thanks to Paul Fries, Herb Butterfield, and our entire company. East Wind, with music by Sigmund Romberg and book and lyrics by Oscar Hammerstein II, was dramatized by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. The Railroads last year hauled a near-record peacetime volume of freight. Yet, despite all the service railroads performed their earnings were less than in years when traffic volume was lower. That's because wages and prices railroads must pay have gone up much farther and faster than have their revenues. Today, when the railroads are playing an important part in our defense program and preparing for even bigger jobs ahead, it's important to you that railroads be permitted earnings that will let them go full steam ahead on their huge program of improvement. To the end that they will be able to provide even more and better transportation service. And now here again is our petite guest, Mimi Benzer. Gordon, I'm convinced. The show train is the fastest thing on wheels. You think so, Mimi? Well, how else could we make two round trips to Indochina in just half an hour? <laughs> well, next Monday night, I'm going to be an old stay-at-home meme and remind you that springtime isn't too far off. With orange blossoms. Oh, that's one of my favorites, Gordon. And who's your guest? Well, one of my favorites, Mimi, Evelyn Case. I'll bet you get a case on Evelyn. Do. <laughs> now, I'll bet nobody around here will take your money, Mimi. <laughs> well, good night, Gordon. <laughs> Come back soon. All aboard. Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and orange blossoms, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> East Wind was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Warner Brothers Starlet. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> the proceeding was transcribed. Now the telephone hour features H.C.O. Pinza on NBC.